This screencast is looking at the different types of synovial joints. So we'll be considering a hinge joint, which can be seen here, ball and socket joint, a condyloid joint, pivot joint, a gliding joint, which in this is referred to as a plane joint and a saddle joint. So if we start at the top left of the diagram, our gliding joint, these bones glide over the top of each other. So in essence they allow backwards and forwards and side to side movement, however it's non-axial. So they're just gliding over. Our hinge joint, such as in the elbow between the humerus and ulna allow for backwards and forwards movement. So in essence we're looking at flinch, flexion and extension. Our pivot joint allows rotation. So the example that they're using here is between the ulna and the radius and this is at the proximal end of those two bones, so near the humerus. So the radius rotates in the groove of the ulna. The other example that they have listed here is between the atlas and axis, so the first two cervical vertebrae. Our condylar joint is biaxial. The example here between our metacarpals and phalanges. So they allow backwards and forwards and side to side type motions. So here they're allowing flexion and extension as well as abduction and adduction. Our saddle joint, which is in the metacarpals, they again biaxial, they allow backwards and forwards and side to side type movement. The last of the synovial joints is a ball and socket joint. Um, the example I've used here is the humerus and the scapula, so the shoulder, and there's also the hip joint where the femur meets in with the pelvic girdle. Now this is multi-axial in that they allow backwards and forwards, side to side, and rotation. So the backwards and forwards represents flexion and extension, side to side representing abduction and adduction, and again our rotation.